Good morning, everyone. Centering breaths, please. And as the sound begins to fade, let it take hold of your mind, your focus, and draw you deeper and deeper towards your heart, your soul, the altar of God. Here in this sacred, quiet space, Father, Mother, God, we give thanks for your holy presence. Here where we are meant to meet you, our inner garden of Eden, in this place you walk and talk with us. In this place you guide us, support us, heal us. So we enter this space willingly, lovingly, and with great anticipation to meet you so that you can guide us in our day-to-day -day lives. We are your beloved children in whom you are well pleased. And now we ask that you guide us on how to live accordingly. And so it is. And now please join me in reading our mission statement, which you can find on this front of this bulletin. And together we say, the Global Center for Christ Consciousness is a spiritual center for students and masters on the spiritual path. We are dedicated to awakening the inner Christ and creating a world of love, peace, joy, and abundance. And now for our sacred reading. From White Eagle. Happiness is the realization of God in the heart. We do not wish you good luck. We do not wish you prosperity. We do not wish you good health. We do wish you supreme happiness and the union of your heart with the great white light, with Christ and all the angels of Christ. Happiness is not merely pleasure, for happiness can sometimes come in the midst of great sorrow Happiness is a realization of God in the heart. Happiness is a result of praise, of thanksgiving, of faith, of acceptance, a quiet, tranquil realization of the love of God. And so it is. Very nice. Can you please share with me what topics you'd like me to cover today? Just a few good examples. Renewal. What is it? Are there any redeeming facts of the ego? No. <laughs> Just cover that briefly. Um, wait, I'll, 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 I'll cover that ego thing. What? Love, of self. <laughs> Speak. Love over fear? Okay, thanks. That's good. Thank you. So we're on this amazing journey. A journey without distance to a place we never left. That means that the good news is that we are as God created us to be. The bad news is that we pretend that we're not. <clears throat> and when I say pretend that we're not, that's actually a very accurate statement because we continually pretend that we're not holy beings. But the problem is we're pretending that we're not because we believe we're not. <clears throat> so it's not really pretending. We act true to ourselves. We actually think we're unholy, and then we act accordingly, and now our actions seem very congruent with our, with our beliefs. 
right? If we didn't act unholy, we would actually explode because we would be so incongruent, believing that we're unholy and yet not acting unholy, it wouldn't work. So we're acting based on our beliefs. We believe that we're flawed beings and therefore we live up to that standard. And there, there are ways out of that. One of you is asking about the ego and so forth and, and love and fear and so on. Yes, it's, it's, it's really this person that we see, this person that we seem to be is, is a collision of reality and illusion. Reality is constantly, the will of God is constantly, consistently pouring in and through us to say, you are my beloved children in whom I am well pleased. And the ego in us is screaming the other direction. No, you're not. Look at you. Look what you've done. You've been naughty. You've been addictive. You, do, you know, so this, this person is a collision of these two messages. Now, do you understand why you have to drink? Now do you understand why you need some kind of thing to calm it down, to, to, to drink it, to, to drug it, to whatever, the, even the foods. They're all a way to buffer all this stimulus. Edgar Cayce was an incredible intuitive, clairvoyant, but he was a chain smoker. And what they realized is, he was smoking to try to counter the anxiety of being a farmer with no education, channeling all this stuff that was incongruent with the people around him. It was the inner battle, you know, reality and illusion. He's channeling this amazing stuff, but the human self is going, for you to do this? <clears throat> you know, you can go to jail for doing health readings and curing people. You know, it's, and he's just a, a guy, sixth grade education, but anxiety. And we all have it. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a world leader or, or a humble whatever, uh, you know, person on the planet. We all have our variations of this. But it is true that the more we step up to own who we are, the more this collision will be palpable. It's like an anxiety in us this, you know, seeming reality and illusion. <clears throat> and one way to cope with it, really, is the, the famous concept, one day at a time. I mean, as, as beautiful, I mean, that is sounding simple, one day at a time. But it's not easy. Because the ego doesn't go, oh, well, pff, now that you're living one day at a time, I might as well retire. It's going to go, oh, you're going to try that, are you? And it's got a whole list of things to do to deal with people who try to live one day at a time. You're trying to, to, to diet, but you're going to, you know, you're going to know, oh my God, I want to lose 40 pounds, but it's already been a week and I haven't lost anything. You know, the ego is holding back, help making your body hold back to make you give up and then be even more depressed and eat more. How dare you try to change your life? Um, it's going to deal with addiction the same way. You know, you, you're only one week in. You don't even have any nails left. You've chewed them down to nothing. You think you're going to handle this forever? Oh, no, one day at a time. And we take it too literally, this one day at a time concept. One day at a time is synonymous to a degree with being in the moment. Okay? It's sort of be in the moment and be in the moment one day at a time. So they, they're not exactly the same. But being in the present moment and one day at a time, the ego is going to even mess that up. So you go, well, <clears throat> I'm making some plans to pick up my children at school tomorrow, but that's not being in the moment. I'm supposed to do one day at a time, so I have to wait till tomorrow to make plans. Mom, you going to pick us up? Well, who knows? <laughs> we have to, you know, be open. But, but mom, the school is 20 miles away. I know, but if it's not God's will, I mean, is that really how you're going to live impractically like that? And that's just the ego trying to sabotage again our lives. So living one day at a time, the perks include slowing down. They include, inc they include being grounded, 
believe it or not, slowing down, living one day at a time, being in the moment is a, is a means of slowing down. It, it kind of grounds you. <sighs> See, there's no anxiety about tomorrow because I'm right here. There's no regrets of the past because I'm right here. But the present moment doesn't mean the present split second, but it can. The present moment means generally now, what's happening right now. What is needed right now? But right now, I might need to make plans to pick up my kids at school. That's not out of the moment. Yeah, but it's future planning. But it's happening in the now. There's a difference. A Course in Miracles and Christ Consciousness explains this as people basically hyper plan their, everything has to be exactly in place. You know, hyper plan their lives to keep the world from caving in on them. Not that it's going to cave in, but that's the anxiety we live with. I have to have every, all things in place, you know. Um, and that's just a hyper vigilance, which comes from being wounded. If I can just keep everything planned and nothing goes wrong, I'm not as messed up as I think I am. But the more I'm doing that, it's sad because it shows just how messed up I am. Um, I remember kind of a, a funny story. Uh, the Beatles, they said they toured a particular country. I won't name which one, but they, they toured a particular country and they were told, okay, here's your schedule. At precisely seven o'clock, not one minute before nor after, there will be a knock on your door. Your ride will be ready. You will exit the door at that moment, follow your driver. They will take you down to your car. You will be at your car at 7.03, at which point, and just like this, here's the, and then shuttle to the concert. You will be picked up and shuttle. And these, these four kids, they just go, okay. And they just did everything different. They didn't answer the door for 20 minutes and just made them all have anxiety attacks. You know, it's like, which is passive aggressive behavior. I'm not endorsing it, but I think it's funny. God, you know, it's, it's a little much. Um, but staying in the moment helps us deal with bad habits. It helps us deal with the anxieties of tomorrow and the anxieties of yesterday, you know, fears. Stay in the moment. So when it comes to healing, what does, what does it mean to, to healing and being in the moment? Being in the moment would mean you never work on past issues. That's not what it means. It, it's n being in the moment is not obsessing in the moment. So here's an example. I want to do healing on some issue of my past. One tactic is to obsess on what happened and just keep talking about it, obsessing on it, sweeping it under a rug, avoiding it. It's still all a, a, an incorrect and inaccurate and, and unproductive means of dealing. It's unsuccessful ways of dealing with the past is to try to sweep it under the rug. The right way to do it is to bring it to the present. You don't let trauma, post-trauma, drag you to the past. How do you know it's dragging you to the past versus bringing it to the present? Well, there's a few ways to know. One of them is, are you obsessing? Are you obsessing on what happened, what shouldn't have happened, what you wish wouldn't have? See, wishing doesn't mean I'm here. That means I'm in the total hypothetical mind of if only, if only that hadn't happened, I would be a better person. If only, if only, and that messes us up. How do you know it's in the present that you're bringing it to healing? Because you're bringing it, you're acknowledging something happened, you're bringing it, you're processing it today. For example, if I'm talking about it and I start to get overwhelmed, go ahead, scream the stuff out in a pillow if you need to. Then breathe, decompress all that, breathe, and call in the presence of God. See, I'm in charge. I'm doing something constructive with it. It's not crippling me. It's not immobilizing me. It doesn't have a grip the way it would have if I only kept obsessing on the past. So it's kind of like having our finger on the pulse of how we're doing inside, being in the present moment. You know, strangely enough, the outer world is just a mirror of our inner world. So believe it or not, anything you do, any action you take is an attempt to avoid being in the moment. Any action you take is actually an attempt to avoid yourself. It's true. 
You're in avoidance and you don't, nobody knows it. All compulsions are an attempt to avoid being here now. But being here now, it would mean in the present moment, I'm told, we, all, we could all say that God is found in the present moment. Ah, no, not quite. When you're getting to the present moment, before you land there and find God, you'll have to find yourself and you don't like you. So you're going to have a panic attack and then jump back into the past when somebody ruined you. Even in the present, the real you is waiting. On your way there, the ego says, excuse me, you don't want to go there. What do you mean? I, I heard God's waiting for me in the present. Oh, no, no. If there even is a God, the ego would say, let me explain. Before you find it, you have to look at you. And do you know how creepy you've been? Do you know how abused you are? Do you, you're broken. You're damaged goods. I am, yes. And if there is a God, do you think God wants damaged goods in heaven? Well, I don't think. You need to go to the island of misfits. Didn't you, haven't you seen Rudolph cartoon? You know? You, there's a special place for you. Yes, door number one is God, but you're not deserving that. So tell him what we have for him, Satan. Well, although you didn't win door number one, door number two is eternal hell. You know, and so that's the option that the ego gives us. And one of you is asking, is there redeemable qualities of the ego? Sometimes it's semantics because in psychology, the concept of the ego is almost like the, the choice maker, the person, the, the soul. And that's not what really what the ego is in its truest sense. It's just confusing semantics. So some people say, well, I'm told in psychology that the ego tells me if I burn my hand on a stove not to do it again, so my ego's trying to help me. But that's just, it's semantics. That's not, that's not really the ego we're talking about. We're talking about self-loathing ego. We're not talking, talking about the person that learned to not burn their hand on a stove. But that's, you know, getting uh, into other co topics that we can't get into right now. Um, so it's the one day at a time concept is not to be taken uh, too literally. It does. It should not become some sort of like, um, I have to stay in this moment or else I'm a bad person or something to that effect. Um, it's just a matter of what is happening right now. So, for example, if it's a, a negative, um, and I'm triggered. Is it happening right now or is this a ghost from the past? See, ghosts will, the ego will make ghosts seem like they're happening right now, but they're not. And if you sit with it, you'll realize. Now, you know, maybe your car is steering off on ice. It's happening right now. Granted, but bless you. But most of the time, even the skidding on the ice and it seems like it's happening right now, most of what you're experiencing inside is not happening right now. Most of what you're experiencing is the fear from the past, where you were told, if you skid on the ice, you might die. So what? Yeah, but death is bad. Who told you that? See, even the idea of death is a past program. So all the even emotions that, like you would think, present in the present, a friend just passed away, so I'm in the moment and I'm grieving. You're actually not, because grief doesn't exist in the present moment. It's related to all your concepts of what you're grieving over, death, loss. So no, I'm in the moment, I'm grieving the loss of my mom. No, you're grieving all losses for all time. You're grieving the loss of God, you're grieving the loss of mother, grandmother, loss of your friend, your dog, et cetera, et cetera. It's all grief. And there's a saying in neuroscience, that in a way the brain doesn't know what's happening right now versus whatever didn't. And whether something's externally or happening or it's just a thought you're having. To, to the brain, it's all the same. Well, that's exactly right. To the ego as well. It's all the same. It, the ego knows, to a degree, it knows there's no outside world. It's just a hologram. So it has to mess you up on the inside. It has to make you afraid of finding a better life. You see? Make you afraid. And to do that, it has to bundle all of these emotions together. The unknowns, fear, loss, betrayals, and whatever happens to weave in together to make you not want to create a new life for yourself. It just, it bundles these together, puts them in the machine, and hits play. And these emotions are now playing. 
But they seem, so, I mean, like, we can talk about an emotion, and it'll seem very objective in conversation. Feel it, and you start, your gut starts to get weird. You kind of curl up a little more sometimes, and you, you need soothing things to try to cope. That doesn't mean you've healed it. It takes courage to heal. And therefore, it takes courage to access the present moment. It's not just a mental discipline. People can say, oh, I have a discipline where I just sit and I don't think anything about the past or present. And that's really, really good for mind training. But it doesn't mean you're actually achieving all that you think you're achieving. Because if I sit in the silence and an old wave of stuff comes up, I should work it. Not, not say, no, no, you're the past. Get away from me. Let it come through. Let it come and say, basically, you have no place here. You, you look at it and retire it for lack of work. There is nothing here for you. Well, we're your past and we're intimidation. We're fear. We're inadequacy. Boo. And you just go, really? Well, that's interesting. But you have no place here. There's no Velcro for you to stick to. I'm a spirit. I got spiritual Teflon, man. And you just skid right off. That's courage. The courage is not to, to like, I don't want to think about that, which is what we call spiritual bypassing to really, really be able to, you know, there's a place where you really get it versus do it. When we really get that we're over a certain relationship or a certain addiction or whatever, that's, that's different than I'm trying to get over it. You know, and so I'm trying to get past the job loss is different than I totally get it. But for me to get it, it's not time that heals. Time doesn't heal. You know, I mean, that's kind of weird. It's just a thing with dials. I mean, does it ever talk to you and process you? You know, does a clock ever say, listen, we should do some breath work now? It's just a clock. It's just a thing. Time doesn't heal nor even the movement of the stars and sun and so on, that doesn't heal. If that healed, then why did we reincarnate? Time doesn't heal, but it does give you a convenient so that you don't think about something because you kind of forgot it. But you never get past that because spirit wants you to be a God being to where these things are brought to you and they have no place in you, not because you forgot them. I mean, then all you need is, you know, a certain kind of a state of mind where you have absent mindedness. I'm very holy because I don't, I have absent mindedness. I have no memory, short term or long term. I have amnesia. I'm holy. That doesn't work that way. Even if you had amnesia, you still got to come back and deal with the things that you couldn't remember when you had amnesia. So the proper way of being in the moment doesn't mean avoiding the past and future. It means recognizing. Is this really happening today? Is this happening right now? What is happening and what isn't happening right now? And it's masterful because you're like, this, I see nothing as it really is. I see only the past. And, you know, bring it on. I don't mean you literally need to do that all the time. I'm just, it's an example. Bring it on. And these memories. And so, so what if? You lost this job last week, and, and so what, what about it? Well, you know, what? everything could go wrong now. This could happen, and that could happen, and this could happen, and that could happen. Is that happening right now? Most of the time, it isn't, which means I'm anxious about hypotheticals, which means I'm not in reality and I'm not in the present moment. So one of the things we struggle with when I was talking about that collision one of the things we struggle with is this concept of trying. There's a part of us that knows that God is perfect. And so what we try to do is come into this world and impose perfection on it so that we don't become suspicious that we're not in heaven anymore. That's what we do. We try to impose perfection so that it feels a little more heaven-like but I'm never calm about it. I'm anxious about imposing perfection. And, and what'll happen is, and everybody has to deal with this, you'll either try to impose perfection or you will crash because you can't. And that's this world. I'm looking for a perfect world. So I try to impose it or I fail. 
And neither of those is real. Neither of those is peaceful. They're both coming from doing. Right? You see what I'm saying with that? Trying to impose perfection in an imperfect world, it doesn't work. What can happen, the only way to bring this world to a place of perfection, which you can't, as it is, is to forgive it for what it isn't. Our forgiveness of the world we see actually restores this place. It changes our perception of this place. For example, I don't feel like it has as much power over me as it once did. It being what? what a former relationship, that you know, a marriage that failed or whatever, um, an accident you had that created a disability, war, famine, and whatever else. I start to change my perception. Now, that's not actually just a neurological reprogramming. I'm not just happier in this world. What actually starts to happen is I'm seeing it differently because I'm different. My neurology, which is only the biological or neurological explanation on a, on a material level, that is happening. That's just an outer manifestation of consciousness. So my consciousness is changing. As I practice forgiveness, I need to forgive that someone's late. I need to forgive. That doesn't mean you enable the behaviors, but you forgive all that seems imperfect. And one way to do that is don't think, take things so seriously. You know, lighten up as best you can, as best you can. When you see that you're obsessing, just see through it. Oh, man. There it is. I'm obsessing again. So, Michael, why do you obsess? Well, because I'm trying to impose perfection in an imperfect world. Does that seem like a good idea? No. I know that. Ah. So, how do you want to respond to that? Um, laughter. You know? Well, then laugh. Well, I'm not in the mood to laugh. Okay. But when you, when you wake up in the middle of the night going, <laughs> and not know why, you'll now you'll know. It was, you know... <laughs> You were like, you know, you were holding back and, you know, you woke up, you're not, you're not doing a crazy laugh, you know, it's just, you finally let it percolate up, right? So that's one of the keys, you know, just to be in the moment partly means lightening up. It's partly lightening up. It's partly, it's like, oh, you know, I mean, I, 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 for one, you know, I'm, I'm aware of moments of, of, um, perfectionism or whatever it happens to be, because everybody will have it. I mean, it's just going to happen. You're, you're late for an appointment. Uh oh, you speed a little to compensate. It, that's all part of this world. But forgive yourself for being late. But if I say, I, I, I always forgive myself for being late. What do you mean always? Are you still always late? Well, yeah, but I forgive myself. And then you're a liar. That's called apology without amends. And you can try, but um, come on, anybody with a brain can see through that. You're still late. So I know that I've done my life, the perfectionism, but then there's also the moments of giving up and crashing. There's things you can't fix, but it's not about fixing them. It's about acceptance. One of you uh, asked about acceptance and that's right. It's, well, you know, this is the way this is going to be today. You know, it's kind of a, a strange example, but we talked about this last week. <clears throat> when you're filming a, a TV show or a movie, there are actors that get very tense about the lines and they won't even own that they messed up their line. They'll just keep going. And then when somebody says, hold it, cut, they get mad at everybody else. Why would somebody mess up? Yeah, you No, I did. I'm a trained actor. I don't mess up. And they create tension for everybody. And that's what we do in life. Create tension for everybody because we won't own simple things like a mistake. But theoretically, all you do is cut, take two, and you go again. That's it. You just do it again. And sitcoms have the same thing. You have your obsessive person that wants to get it right. And I've seen that watching filming of movies and shows in, when I was a kid. And they should just mostly laugh. They're called bloopers. You know, you just, you just should just laugh it off, but not everybody does. So in life, they take it so seriously, and it makes you want to go, dude, you're filming a sitcom, not Shakespeare. Just relax. You know, it just, it, like, relax. But the obsessive about perfection really shows how broken we are. 
but so does the opposite. Oh, I don't try to impose perfection. In, in, perfection, in fact, is, 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 is impossible. That's why I give up on everything. <laughs> See, that's not healthy either. Acceptance doesn't mean, that's not equated with that, that giving up. Acceptance is, that's all we can get for now, so let's let it be. It is what it is. And, um, I mean, when I was in high school, I remember, I, I, I loved um, game day. You know, I'd play soccer a bit. And I remember there was torrential rain that was coming. And then the guys are talking, we'd see each other, you know, out of class, because um, usually we weren't in class. And we'd see each other and go, hey, did you hear the coach is thinking about canceling the game? No. I was like, no. This is like fun time, the games, you know? I didn't have a great home life, so being gone at a game was fun. So, and I, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. It was like, no, we got to have our game. So it's, and I'm telling you, it raining harder, and it's starting to rain harder, and the field's getting all, you know. I talked to one of our players. I got an idea. You get your car. You drive it out to the field. We're going to drag some pallets behind your car, sweeping the field clean of water. And it rain, and it's raining now. Let's stand on the pall pallets while you're driving. And we're scraping water off, and it just kind of comes back. And, and I'm, I'm not kidding. This was a bad scene of a movie, man. <clears throat> I'm not kidding. They finally gave up. M Michael, man, it isn't happening. Oh, no, no. I've got an idea. Swear to God. I go out there with pipe and rebar and a hammer, trying to put holes in the ground for the water to drain into. That was so illogical because, you know, the hole's going to fit like a teen teaspoon. You know, it's just, you know, and the guys are out under shelter out at the gym just looking at me. And all I could see was their heads going, you know, and I'm like, must create holes, you know, go on without me. You know, I'm laying in this and it was just and, and then I just finally looked up and I the rain, you couldn't even see through it to the gym. It was raining so hard. <sighs> Took me a while, but I think I'm going to accept that it's not happening right now. <laughs> Such a bummer. You know, so we do that. And the, and the film people, they do it. And it's, there, there's a point where we just, just laugh and you have to, to accept. This is the way it's going to go. But under that desire that we all have for perfection or crashing, What's nice about that is you suspect there is such a thing. That's actually good news. Why do you impose perfection? You perfectionists, you, you people that are A-type personalities. Why do you do that? Because you know there is such a thing. You just don't know how to make it happen. So you work at it and it's not going to work. Why do you people crash and give up and become depressed or fatigued and so on in life? Because you know there's such a thing as real perfection. And you just don't know how to find it. So in a way, you're one step wiser than the ones that are still trying to make it happen. You finally realize it isn't going to happen. You just don't know what to do about the feeling. So you crash. What we need to do now is whether we're the perfection or the failing is, this is not my home. Why am I trying to create heaven in hell? Wait a second. This isn't making sense. Heaven is heaven, and it's unscathed. Then how do I make heaven? You don't. It's already here. Then why can't I see it? How do I make it so I can see it? You don't. Forgive yourself for not seeing it. And the veils will start to be lifted, and tomorrow you feel different. And it is a day-at-a-time healing program. It's a day-at-a-time. So today you got it. Tomorrow you didn't. You slipped. Oops, sorry. You know, Cut. Take two. And if it has to happen two and three and four times, the mother, man, the Holy Spirit of God is infinitely patient with this whole thing. You know, she's just like, did you learn? No. Okay. Try again. And it isn't, we think it's try again, meaning the doing. It's try again in letting go the doing and just practice forgiving. <sighs> I got to just forgive myself. Call it grandparent wisdom. Meaning, all, not that all grandparents are wise, it, it just saying that there's a parent that tries to make, make their kid be a certain way, and then the grandparent that enjoys the view. They just sit back and watch the parent trying to get everything to go right. 
I don't know why you can't get better grades. Blah, 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 blah. And the parent, you know, grandparents just like, wow, this, yeah, this is great. You know, can you believe that? Blah, blah, blah. Yes, I can. The parent is still trying to do, but, right? The grandparents just, <laughs> God. Yeah, I remember my first, when I had first daughter, man, and she was having some problem going on. She was a baby and, and uh, colic or something, you know, and they didn't, they didn't have any issues and health issues, but what this once she was going through this stuff and she was in pain and she's crying. And I happened to be at my grandmother's with her and, and I'm like, what is with this? And she's just knitting, you know, <laughs> and I'm part of me is like, what is up with that? You know, <laughs> cold blooded woman, you know, over <laughs> Why isn't she jumping into the fray with me? Why isn't she in the quicksand going, oh, I don't know what we're going to do. You know? Yeah, it's just like, you know, just like getting irritated that she's not getting irritated, you know? So, um, and it's like, no, no, that's the grandparent wisdom. I'm going to make mistakes. Can I relax? Can I, you know, can I laugh at it a bit more? And I'm not saying trauma is funny per se. I'm saying that, all of the things we do to try to find who we really are, are a waste of time. If we don't surrender to the voice of the Holy Spirit that knows who we are, how are we going to expect, even if you could find it on your own, it's going to take a billion years versus right now in this present moment. I mean, there are people with no religiosity, no religion, no spirituality, no notions of philosophy who have testimonials where they say, yeah, and then there's this one day after my 15th beer, second shot of heroin, I said, God, I need your help. And I saw angels. And there's people in Sedona going up on the Red Rocks meditating. Oh, money, money, you know, and they're like, no angels. But this, this drunk drug addict saw God. And you get upset about it because they, they shared one thing you didn't. Truly, I don't know how to do this. Humility. I don't know how. Show me. And everybody else says, oh, I know how. <sighs> oh, uh, you know, I know how to do this. Then why aren't you holy? You know, why do you still have to walk up the mountain, Bell Rock? Why don't you float up? <laughs> you know, what are you going to do? So... When I forgive that I can't float up the mountain, then what I'm doing is I'm allowing a reflection of perfection to come into my heart. But I've had five failed marriages. Yes, because you were looking for God in all the wrong faces. You know, you were looking for God. That, and that's the good news. Yeah, but I've been married 10 times. Every one of them, every shot of heroin, everything you've done as hurtful, shameful, whatever you think it is, everything is a cry for love. If it isn't an expression of love, it's a cry for love. So how should I treat myself with these shortcomings, you know? I, I learned the hard way instead of the easy way. It's an illusion. I mean, it's all okay because you're still going to get another shot at it. There isn't really failure hell. There's failure reincarnation. Failure, re and, and I don't just mean lifetimes. I mean reenactments of your failures. They just keep coming around for you to get right. So after I get it all perfected, I get to ascend? No, because even if you did get it all perfected, you would laugh at the fact that you had it all the time. Just when you, after all this hard work, oh my God, oneness, wait a minute. It was there all the time. I just needed to forgive myself and the world for what I thought it was. And now I find God. Now I'm irritated about that. And I got to do forgiveness again, you know? Um, but truly it, there's, there's an easier way to deal with all this. I remember once I went to dinner, my dad, when I was a kid, my dad and all these big wigs that he dealt with. And, um, and so he was in a sense, he was forced to be nicer than usual. And because he was in front of all these people. And um, I remember he said, so, Michael, what would you like? I don't know, you know, I'm a nervous kid, you know, and you can have anything you want. And I'm like, you know, it's like a miracle. 
he's being nice. Wow. You know, anything? Yes. So I'm like, I'll take pudding and cake. And, and I ordered like four or five desserts to be for my meal. And he just, you know, okay. And he ordered them. I'm thinking, this is, they're going to, what are they going to knock me off later? Or something? There's, I'm being set up here, like fattened for uh, the slaughter. This is weird. <clears throat> Which is probably not right for a four-year-old to think. No, no, I was probably 10. But anyway, uh, I'm thinking, okay. And I'm just in the moment. It is, wow, this is exciting. So um, it got to the point where, you know, I started fast and now it's, and then looking around, just distracting, hoping, no, hoping nobody notices that I, I can't eat all of four or five of these things, a bite of each. And, and he, he kind of gloated. He, he enjoyed this. He knew where, where it was going. And so it was time and we're going to leave. And he said goodbye to his friends and they're leaving and he waited for me. It's like, wow, this is also, you, you know, unique. So they all left and he finally said, Michael, are you full yet? No, no. And I tried a little more. Michael, are you full yet? Yeah. And I felt ashamed and embarrassed because, you know, I, we spent this money on food and I said I could do it. I went through all that. And then he just said, did you learn your lesson? Yeah. And that was it. And that's what the Holy Spirit does, honestly. Every night when you lay your head on your pillow with sugar plums dancing, you know, um, the Holy Spirit's just saying, how'd you do? About what? Uh, never mind. <laughs> if you don't even know what lessons, they're just going to be on automatic pilot, auto, you know, auto order kind of thing. <clears throat> but if it's, uh, well, about that thing, yes. How did you do with that? Well, I thought I did okay, but I'm not at peace about it. Okay, honey, I love you. Let's, let's bring some more of that. To, would you like that tomorrow or you want to put it off for a week? doesn't matter because you're still going to complain about it when it happens, but she's just going to, in her infinite patience, she's just going to, you know, recycle these things so we get another shot at it. Take two, take three, and just this loving, loving, infinitely patient presence that is the Holy Spirit of God or the Divine Mother. How long is it going to take you? Forget this heaven, hell, and God doesn't like you notion, and try this, infinite love of the Divine Mother. It could take you a billion years, and she doesn't care, because she's just going to reflect your consciousness. Now, here's the great thing, if we could do this. Mother, I have limitations uh, about finances, and she says, and so it is, honey. I'll mirror those limitations. So today, you don't have money to pay your phone bill. And she's like, we good? No, I'm going to complain about it. There's another alternative I don't want to know about. I would just want to complain. Let me, you know, empower me and get, let me have my voice of complaint. Whatever you like, honey. Grumble, grumble, grumble. But there's a point where you reach a pain tolerance. You know what? I'm tired of losing friendships. I'm tired of not being able to pay money. Whatever your weakness is. She's just reflect. even in illness. The mother loves us so much she will manifest as dark atoms and molecules known as an illness or a lack of money. Is that her favorite hobby? No. Why does she do it? To say, I love you so much, I'm going to show you the parts of yourself that are not yet redeemed. But the ultimate goal is if you asked her, what would you like to mirror today? Because she'll say, good morning, honey. What would you like me to mirror today? Not consciously, of course. This is deep, deep, deep in the soul level. What would you like me to mirror today? Oh, I don't know. It doesn't matter because nothing goes my way. And so it is. And it's, and it's going to go like that. But if you asked her, mother, yes, honey. Your will, not mine, be done. She's going to be like, wait, what? You know, I'm joking, but it's like, this is the big one, Elizabeth. You know, Sanford and stuff. She's going to be like, I'm coming to join you, honey. So you got the Fred Sanford effect. I love that, dude. And, and she, you know, she's saying, are you, are you sure? Yes, mother. Then what would you like me to reflect? Your will be done. Wow. What an amazing thing, because that means for my will to be done, God's will, I cannot reflect limitation. 
or hate, resentments, unhealed wounds. And so it is, you say to her. So the ultimate goal is when we stop trying to be us, even if it's an obsessed us trying to become more like God, the ultimate goal is when we go on to start asking to reflect God's will rather than our own, our own will. Not my ego, but God's will. I don't ask to be reflect. I don't want the Holy Spirit to waste time reflecting illness and limitation for me. Be able to say in your prayers, Mother, you're off the hook. I want you to reflect positive atoms and miracles, bright ones, light ones, instead of dark. And those are called miracles. And we think it's God favored us today. But really, it's just, that's, that's the greatest version of organic as you can imagine. That's who we really are. So I don't have to try so hard to be spiritual because it's already, it's already coming about. I'm, I'm getting to reflect my holiness, my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. And we still have these programs going, yeah, but money isn't money. Having money is for greedy people. You know what? God says, I want you to thrive. Is it selfish to ask to be cured of an ailment? Shouldn't you just be praying for the healing, healing of others? That's all bogus. Those are all misprograms. God's will be done means you're allowed to be prosperous, healthy, wise, joy-filled. And the ego's going, really? Because I have files on you. I've got, I've got all kinds of files. And if you want me to move beyond texts, I'll go to emails that I have on you. And if that's not, I'm going to go to Word documents. If that's not, I got video on you. And, you know... What I do when there's that, that, you know, part when I, when I, because there's the, there's the extreme in me that wants to be, you know, in perfection, state of perfection, but there's also the other side that goes, sometimes I just want to let go and just be a human being and all that. And those two extremes, neither of those is God. So I, I noticed that when I try to do either one, I often end up laughing at it. You know, I try to be naughty you know, and it just doesn't work. But I mean, I, I can remember that all the way back as a kid, just tr trying to like, you know, get away with just doing normal things that kids, boys, guys, or whatever humans do. And I could just never do it. I would end up going, you know, I mean, if I was a bubble gum, I'd get caught. And I'm like, what's up with that? <laughs> People steal cars and they get away with it. I steal a piece of bubble gum. So imagine the mother saying, well, honey, would you like to be able to get away with it? Yes, I would. Good. Would you like to get away with everything and just have it be karma in another life? No. <laughs> what would you like? Pay it off now so that I don't have any accumulating stuff. Great. And so it is. So that concept of instant karma is actually choosing to not be on a credit system and have everything paid off now. You don't have to do that. You can say, I don't want to be so evolved. I want to plan, you know, long-term payments. Oh, so you would like, what, another 20 lifetimes? Yeah, yeah, why not? And so it is. Or you can stop complaining that your slate keeps getting cleared with each thing you try to get away with, whatever that happens to be, and learn to laugh at yourself and just say, it's, it's not worth it. I'm choosing this. I'm choosing to be a good soul and I'm trying to navigate. I don't need to find perfection. I'm just, oh, what is the will of God? And the will of God is not about being judged for things that you do as a human being. You're going to have moments that you're afraid. That's not faithlessness and naughtiness. It's just your human self still winning today. Remember the collision. And that rose up a little further than it does some days. See it for what it is and what it isn't. That's the ego fear self is rising. Oops. Let me breathe, forgive myself, and... See, I don't have to squash it down, okay? I don't have to defeat it. See it for what it is and isn't and decide, is this what I'm choosing? So to me, this, the, the concept of the mother and her infinite patience, I just love that concept, you know? How would you like me to help you today? How can I mirror for you? And it's an automatic thing. It's not your cognitive brain that does this. It's an automatic thing. Your consciousness is reflected and she will 
play that role for you. We'll talk about this more maybe in the next week or two. But I still, I just love this concept that be in the present moment. Don't get caught up in what was or wasn't happening in the past, not what will or will not happen in the future. Just see it. Why do you go to the future? Because you must not enjoy today. So you're jumping and hoping for a different future. But by doing that, you're still judging today as not being good enough. So that's why you're anticipating a better future, right? Typically, that's what you would be doing. You don't usually go, I'm, I'm going to sit down. My life's really good. I'm going to sit down and just visualize a really terrible future. That doesn't, that's not what people do. Usually, the anticipations of the future are for something better. But that implies today isn't okay. Judge today as not being okay. You know what's going to happen? It becomes my future. My judgments carry over and become my future. The only way, I don't care what neurological tricks and techniques people have for creating a better future, it doesn't work. If I haven't forgiven the present and the past, the future is fated to be what it is, my usual patterns. If I don't change my consciousness, the programs remain the same. And the mother's going to say, I, honey, as long as it takes. Explain to me why the British still put too much water in eggs for hundreds of years. Why don't they just invent butter? I couldn't resist. It's a dig at me, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Yes. Um, butter is a perfect food, by the way. Everything that butter touches, it improves upon, except water. But if it proves, so all the Holy Spirit is asking us to do is be more like butter. Be golden, be sweet, and have a positive effect on everything you touch. <laughs> With that in mind, take a few centering breaths. Let us pray. Let us do a butter meditation. Golden, sweet, and have a positive effect on everything you touch. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> setting aside all the stuff of life and of the world. I am ready, Father, Mother, God. I know that my outer life is a reflection of my inner consciousness. But I'm ready for my inner consciousness to change enough to have a positive effect in my outer life. I am ready for that now. I'm surrendering all of my patterns and programs. It doesn't do me any good. He's never served my highest good. I'm ready for my life to reflect that I am a holy child of God. So we take just one minute to observe what does life look like for people that are flawed, separate from God and from each other, out of touch with who they are, everything fragmented. Just take half a minute with what does life look like under those conditions? It should be somewhat obvious, but look at it. Isn't it war? Isn't it challenge, relationship? complications, stomach issues. Look at all the things, all the ways that it manifests. This is because the world is reflecting reflecting our judgments and projections upon ourselves and others. Sometimes we get so hurt by what we see because we know it's coming from our inside, it bothers us to see 
the outer world. I'm upset for these things I appear to be seeing because they reflect my soul and I'm not happy with that. So we project it on others. We judge and project all our triggers and all these odd things. Our addictions, we have to forgive ourselves because we're projecting onto substances when in fact it's not a fight with substances, it's judgments of ourselves. And people might seem to trigger us, various parts of us on the, in the outside world, but I have to forgive my projections and judgments on myself that I put onto them. So I forgive all others and I forgive myself. What I really want to see is the peace of God. I want to see as God sees. And let that fade. Just let it gently fade. And imagine a world, what if everything was connected? What if I now say, I forgive the world I see for what it seems to be and not seems to be, the things I want it to be that it isn't. I forgive it all. I'm so sorry. I love you, world. Not I'm attached to the way you are, not that kind of love. I love you because I know that hidden behind all these images is a real world, is God. I love you. Please forgive me. Thank you. Be what you really are. Show me the mother's reflection hidden behind. Show me that. I challenge you, Holy Spirit, to show me all that you really are. In every face, show me the light. Show me the Christ in every person and being. I challenge you to do so, meaning in a loving, gentle way. I know you can do it. You can help me see in ways that I do not know how. Help me to see, which is not with human eyes. It's with divine understanding. Peace, peace to the world, peace to everybody, peace to your body. Relax, peace. Peace on earth, goodwill to man, peace. Arguments, avoidances. Negative communications or the lack of communication, just enough is enough. Peace, peace to you all. Stand like the Christ and look at the whole world. Peace to business people that think only of money. Peace to those who don't have any. Peace underneath the veil that have our behaviors and so on and images is the light of God. I am determined to see as God sees. Peace to everyone and everything in my life. I affirm peace, the presence of God. Take a minute to just reintegrate that. We're not wrong for seeing a broken world, our own world or the world at large. We're not wrong or bad for that. That's what you would expect to see if the beliefs are that I'm flawed or we're flawed. One thought of flaw on my part or your part towards you, towards myself or you, is going to result as images like that of separation, pain, illness, war. So the world 
people talk about it as ascending. It can only ascend if we ascend. And we can only ascend proportionate to our ability to forgive and ask to see things differently. How could we see a fifth dimensional world if we're still in third dimensional consciousness? Okay, well, how do I get to that other consciousness? Forgiveness primarily. And asking the mother to help to see the world through her eyes. You know, she births us forward in that direction. And it's um, staying, you know, in the moment. In this moment, I, it's, there's nothing wrong with you seeing conflict. You have a blowout in a tire. Don't pretend it isn't happening, but God, it's frustrating. It's this, it's scary, and you have to wait for them to get there, and so on, and so on, and so on. But I am determined to see this differently and get the car jack out and change your tire. Do what you have to do materially, but there will come a time where instead of doing until the day I learn to be the living Christ, what happens is I learn to be the living Christ and it changes what I do and how I do it. And that's one real great way, palpable way to know how you're doing on your path is to measure how much doing and how much being. It's not wrong to do, but as I said last week, are you doing to be or being to do? Just get a feel for that. And in my opinion, I can recognize when I'm in the zone and in the being because miracles come. They left and right, left and right. Just um, two people could be arguing and it goes nowhere. And you just get an insight on one sentence that needs added in that, in that counseling session, let's say you're doing, and peace. That's how you know. You come from another dimension in your own conversations, but not everybody wants to do that. Not everybody wants to accept that, so you have to accept that's where they're at. It's not wrong, bad per se, it's just they're prolonging their lessons and they've got to do it again. I remember all the way back to high school and even when I got married, <clears throat> if somebody I was seeing um, started you know, because people do that. They, they, when they start finding flaws or things they want to project onto you, well, what would happen is once they start judging you in some way, they become irritated or annoyed with you. What starts to happen is then they're going to project that as a thing you, you know, either uh, um, a judgment on you or they might act out in a way that's hurtful to you, right? If somebody doesn't like you or something about you, they often do something hurtful. Agreed? Right. So, if they did, all the way back to high school, I remember if someone did do something and they said, I'm really sorry, I'd say, I don't want an apology. What I would like you to do is change your opinion of me that made you want to do that. Irritated them. <laughs> Irritated. Oh my God, I remember my wife. Oh, I know. I want you to change the way I, you see me. <laughs> she would do that. She'd like, nye, 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 you know, and imitate me like that. But it just made sense, even as a kid. Well, I don't want the apology because you know if apology if somebody apologizes for something they've said or done to hurt you, they're only sorry they got caught or that it leaked out. Even not just getting caught, they're they're sorry that it leaked out. They would like to have contained that resentment. And I was saying I would like you to change the resentment. You see, do you get what I'm doing with that? Because I know that's a little out there, because I'm always a little out there. Do you like that? Yeah, that's, I loved that. And they would be, you know, like, like when I was, she would say, well, what? you know, she just wouldn't dig that at all. But I say, I want you to change your opinion of me that made you want to do that. Like, go for a deeper healing rather than just an apology. Because an apology without an amends is not anything at all. It's just words. So consider that in your own lives. Stay in the present moment. Practice forgiveness in the present moment. It's not going to help to judge or become afraid or, uh, you know, condemn yourself for the slipping. It's got it, cut, cut, take two, like I said last week as well, and move to another level. But, but please remember this because it's one of the concepts about the Holy Spirit, the Divine Mother, and that is when you do that, you actually free her to be who she is. 
I mean, you know, the, the concept mother and matter, they're the same word. It's like uh, the word uh, dura matter. It's some uh, part of the falks in the brain, you know, in the head, the skull. And there's something called dura, which means durable mother. You know, it's kind of like the phrase that some, you know, an atomist kind of play, play off of it, the durable mother. And it just means this is tissue that's very durable, durable matter. It's the mother. She sustains. She's long living. She's throughout all time. She will stay to, with us if this went on for another billion years. There's no end date for her in terms of her love and patience. But why don't we get fed up with it? Why don't we just say enough is enough? Instead of waiting for God to give up on us, why don't we just go, you know what? I think we've been abusing and using the mother and the Holy Spirit long enough. You know, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you to the mother. You know, get that out. I, I see that you've been doing this for me. I, I see that you've been taking the hit for me. And she's taking a hit in a way because she's taking the form of your limitations so that you can see them because she wants you to see them so that you'll give them up. But is that her destiny? Is that all we want to use her for? Why don't we let her reflect her? Why don't I start becoming a child of the mother and reflecting her genetics, right? If you think human genetics are binding, imagine what spiritual genetics are. I am her beloved child in whom she is well pleased. Now, why don't I just start acting like it? You see? Love, gentleness, forgiveness, patience, generosity. Just do my best to live in that place and forgive the rest. Thank you. All right. We're going to take up our collection and do our closing prayer. <clears throat> I hope I covered as many things as you guys brought up before service. Please be as generous as you can be. Remember that the bags in the center here, the bags are for your daily, you know, your Sunday love offerings. Um, the wicker baskets are for any extra donations you can spare um, for us to help people of lesser means. We, uh, you know, we greatly appreciate all the generosity at any level, even if it's from your prayers. All right. So hold your donations in mind, in consciousness. Truly believe what you're saying as you're praying. Together, divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Thank you. While they're passing the baskets, a couple of quick announcements. Let's see. First of all, remember the chaplains will be doing a healing circle after the service. So if you're interested, you can stay. And you can sit and pray with us, just holding space in the room. And um, if you're interested in things um, like some of the recordings of our videos, of our uh, services, they're all online, uh, Facebook or on our website or on YouTube. You you can find tons of playlists that specific topics, but we also have DVD sets that are not filmed and not online. Uh, and each DVD set has four videos in it. So you can get some on Christ consciousness, some on forgiveness, whatever topic you're looking for. All right. And um, we appreciate that everybody's learning to arrive like five, 10 minutes early. That's very helpful for all kinds of reasons. So please continue to do so. The folks online, it starts generally on the hour, but in person, we started a few minutes beforehand. All right. And um, let's see if there's anything else. Christmas Day, we have John Dumas as our guest musician. So this, this Christmas coming up, we don't have a Christmas Eve service, but we have Christmas Day because this year... They group, you know, as the calendar changes, they get closer and closer. So, so this time Sunday happens to be Christmas. So we don't want to do a Christmas Eve and expect people to come back just a few hours later for a Christmas Day service as well. So we're not doing a Christmas Eve, but we are doing the usual New Year's Eve. So we're building it all up for Christmas Day. I know some people are with family, but for those of you who'd rather get away from family, um, <laughs> we will be here and we'll have munchies available and we're going to watch a movie together. So it's a nice spiritual family experience. Um, but John Dumas is going to be our musician. He'll do a couple songs with us as well as on his own. 
And uh, and again, Jay Shwed will be presenting the next generation sonic sound healing journey, a multi-sensory sound healing experience to assist clearing old cellular memories. All right. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And um, let's see. The last couple of things. Um, there's a sign-up sheet in the front lobby for who's whoever's bringing whoever's coming uh, Sunday. You can write, "I'm coming here," but no snacks, or write, "You're coming and you're bringing a snack." We don't need you to bring snacks, so not to worry. Um, you know, we have plenty. Um, generally, it's a holiday, but so don't think you have to, you have to bring something. It's not mandatory. All right. Now I want to share one more announcement, please. Come on up. <laughs> Thanks. Good morning, everyone. My name is Eric. I probably know some of you from around town. And I'm happy to announce that I'm offering a sacred ceremony and meditation to have an inner communion of more being than doing uh, with Spirit of Yeshua and the Christ Light, which is this Thursday at 7. It's donation basis, and 100% of donations are going to benefit children's programs of the Sedona Community Food Bank. And I'm having a representative here to take the donation so you know that's where it's going. And to keep the love flowing for everyone that comes and makes a donation, I'm having a raffle, uh, a drawing for gifts. I'm offering healing sessions. Some other practitioners are, chocolate from chocolate trees, some sacred art. So just to keep the love going. So if you would like to come <clears throat> and experience an inner communion in community, uh, please join us Thursday at 7 right here in your beautiful sanctuary. And the, Thank name, you. the name of the event? The name of the event is Cave of the Christ. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Jay, are you here? Is Jay here? Okay. I was going to let him say a word too. Okay, cool. All right. Please stand for our closing prayer. Remember Jay's event later on. And to you folks joining us around the world online, we really, really appreciate your presence. Bless you, bless you. Um, folks, remember to share donations. It's the last week or so now um, to share donations of what you want us to bring to the community and hand out to people of lesser means. Um, usually, and the board members will contribute our own personal funds into that uh, to, to match or better um, whatever you folks donate. It's, it's just something we believe in. So uh, those of us that can afford it, you know, we just do our best to pitch in. Um, so we appreciate any amount you can donate. It's very much appreciated and we bring it out to the community, okay? We don't do it as an advertisement, by the way, to our center. It's just love, just left as that. So just feel a centering sense of gratitude. Anyone sharing what they learned or heard today that made the most sense or that might be important in your life? Everything's better with butter. <laughs> Everything's better with butter. That was channeled by the by the culinary Christ, by the way. Yes, dear. Yes. You like that one, huh? It, whatever isn't already love is a cry for love. You know, it's a it's a calling. You know, that's that's what we're really looking for. And I and I know that's not easy to think or say or feel when somebody's acting out towards us, or sometimes when we're doing things. But but just chill with it for a moment. You know, when you're when you're angry at somebody, just think about it another way and say, my anger at them is a cry for love. No, no it's not. I'm angry and it's righteous. Really. Underneath it is, it's just a call for love. That's what you really want. You wouldn't be angry with them if you felt the total presence of love. And you'd feel so abundant, you would bestow some of that love onto them. But the lack of that presence makes you agitated, makes you vulnerable to being triggered by them. And that's why it's happening. Yes. That's what that felt like when you said looking for God and all the wrong faces. <laughs> I love that. Looking for God in all the wrong faces. Yeah. Yes. Surrender to the voice of the mother. Oh, my God. I mean, it just feels so good to me to think of that, say that, write that, feel that, or whatever. That she, oh, my God, she's freezing to be our limitation so that we can learn. But imagine how she feels when we say, you can, you can let go now. 
She's like, oh, free at last, free at last. You know, just, oh my God, right? That's, I mean, imagine God being released to be God again instead of frozen to be our stuff. Yes. <laughs> forgiving the world, everyone and everything for what they are and for what they're not. Because none of it matters. It's only my perceptions anyway. Yes. I have a rather serious comment. I'm not understanding why Americans don't pronounce the T in butter. To me, as an Englishman, it sounds B U D E R, butter, butter, butter. Yeah. Not butter. Yeah. So, out of all the important feedback we received, for the service today, there's one guy um, who who doesn't like that we pronounce butter as butter. <laughs> All I can say is we won the Revolutionary War. <laughs> so apparently pronunciation of butter doesn't really play into the big picture. Yes. <laughs> the mother is eternally loving. The mother is eternally loving and patient. That's not like, let's have a talk about the mother. And you're made in her image. So the more I am eternally patient and loving, the more I am her. And she's birthing the Christ in me as I'm doing it. So I become the Christ and remember who I am through my thoughts, feelings, actions of love and forgiveness, of peace and love. Yes, dear, one more. Everything is in God. Everything is? Everything is in God. That's where we, we still reside in that place, but we forget. And I hope you enjoyed that concept, the collision. This Some days this is winning, some days that's winning. You know, the more of God's presence. Don't get all anxious about how to make it happen more. The forgiveness relaxes and the levity and the lightness, the ease, the forget, all of that is what brings more of, it makes room for more of God. Our forgiveness makes more room for God. You don't have to actually garden yourself to death. Making room for God through forgiveness. Please center. Our closing prayer. The light of God surrounds us. We are the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. We are the love of God. The power of God protects us. We are the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. We are the presence of God. Wherever we go, God, God is, is, I am, we are, and so it is. Peace be with you all. We'll see you.